One of my favorite characters in all of fiction, hands down, Anakin Skywalker. I think Anakin Skywalker is a perfect example of what it means to be feminine dominant, right? I know typically when people hear the word feminine, the thought process that comes to their mind is someone who looks like a woman or someone who acts like a woman. That's not true. There's a lot of women who look like a woman. Their mannerisms may seem feminine, but they're not feminine. Anakin Skywalker was very emotional. His capacity for love was one of the greatest capacities for love that you've seen. But he was a person who was feminine and dominant, right? He was very powerful. He had the highest midichlorian count ever recorded, you know, up until the point of his life. And with that great power that he had, he was also very emotional, but he put people over principle at every turn. At every turn, Anakin Skywalker would place people over principle. Hey, kitty. Got some cats out here. But the way that Anakin Skywalker operated, you could see it throughout his life. You know, starting at a younger age. And part of it was because, you know, he was prematurely integrated. He had to live his life being a slave, right? You know, one thing to think about Anakin Skywalker is that there was no point in his entire life that he was free. He was born a slave. Then he became a slave to the Jedi. Then he became a slave to Palpatine. There was no point in Anakin Skywalker's life where he was free. No point in his life where he was free. But one thing about Anakin Skywalker, you could see throughout his life that he had this surge of dominance within him. He wanted to be in control, but he wanted to be in control while having no control over his emotions. And being feminine dominant is something that looks cool. Oftentimes, the feminine dominant will be the heartthrob. Most R&B artists will probably be categorized as a feminine dominant, right? Really, a lot of artists in general would be, would be categorized as a feminine dominant. Like if you break down who women are really attracted to, oftentimes it's a man who, who ravishes, right? It's a man who's very emotional. He really desires a woman. He wants to sing about her so much, but he's also willing to show his dominance because that's what feels masculine to her. And it's like a gangbanger. A lot of times a gangbanger would be feminine dominant. But you can be feminine dominant in other ways. He always put people over purpose. He always put people over principle. He had a by any means necessary mentality. And that mentality only works to an extent, right? Because you got to put principle and you have to put purpose as your primary focus, right? Being dominant is something that is only really meant to happen when you're a masculine individual, right? Because then you have self-control over your emotions. Then you have the ability to not just jump off at the wire, just to jump off and do whatever, right? And yes, his assertiveness. Yes, the fact that he could think on the fly was something that greatly helped save a lot of people's lives, but he put a lot of people's lives in danger. The different traits within him were things that were seen throughout that time of his childhood. Like back when he was in, you know, Jedi training, he was a young Padawan, and he was, you know, going through his learning, and the other students would make fun of him because he didn't have control over his emotions, right? Feminine dominance also uh, tend to have a certain sense of entitlement. But they don't understand what it is and what will actually give them the ability to be in a position of leadership. It's just a matter of, wanted to be in a position of leadership just to be in a position of leadership and it's not really about knowing what to do with it it's just about wanting that for ego's sake and for no other true purpose and there was purpose behind it but you got to think you know what happened with Anakin's mother his mother passed away he wasn't in a position to where he could go save his mother and when he got there at the last moment that hurt that that large amount of emotion that he couldn't control he didn't have emotional discipline so when when things got bad it got bad because he was a dominant individual so when he saw his mother died he killed all of them you know i hate them he killed them all the men the women the children see that hatred comes from being feminine and dominant and sometimes it comes from being masculine submissive as well 
because you got to understand that as a person you're not in alignment unless you're masculine and dominant or feminine submissive and then you can integrate those other things in later but if you jump straight to being masculine submissive and oftentimes living a life as a slave is a masculine submissive position if you've ever been overstimulated with the thoughts and dreams of what it means to be dominant to be in control and you don't get that then it's just a matter of time before you flip when you're feminine submissive you're open and receptive to the teaching that you're getting and you're not focused on one exact outcome, right? You accept that life comes the way that it comes, right? So you gotta think about different things that went about. And there are definitely things that probably could have happened better. Because really, the worst thing that ever happened to Anakin was the death of Qui-Gon Jinn. Qui-Gon Jinn would represent the masculine dominant in his life who would give him proper leadership, balanced instruction, to set him on the right path, someone who had the ability to teach him things and, and to put him in the right direction, someone who was masculine and dominant, who was feminine submissive towards the force, right? But what he had was a brother, right? The person who was supposed to raise him was his brother, Obi-Wan Kenobi. And he didn't have that same level of respect for Obi-Wan Kenobi, a natural level of respect that he would have had towards Qui-Gon Jinn. He had to respect him, but it's because of the position he was in. But oftentimes when you're feminine dominant, you end up pushing and creating the different scenarios that would lead to your own destruction because there's different things that you see and you just want to avoid it so bad because you're fixated on a particular individual or a particular outcome. Now, when you're masculine dominant, then you can create a plan, control your emotions. But when you're very emotional and you're dominant, you put yourself in a position where oftentimes you will sabotage those things yourself. Oftentimes hubris is a, a, a big part of being feminine dominant. Think about the conversation that he had with Yoda about the visions he was having about Padme. Yes, leadership could have been better, but what did Yoda tell him? You know, rejoice. She's going to be one with the force. He couldn't see that because he was so fixated on the idea of wanting to be with her, spend his life with her, trying to control things that he couldn't control from this emotional space that he was willing to do certain things. He put a lot of people's lives in danger on a regular basis during the Clone Wars. When he got to the point where he recognized that Senator Palpatine was Darth Sidious, he was in a position to where he could have, you know, could have helped Mace Windu take Palpatine out. But instead, he chose people over principle. Because he formed this connection with Palpatine that where he saw that Palpatine wasn't right. He's like, you know what, he has something that I need. He's going to help me save my wife. And that's not actually what happened. And the thing about that intense love that comes with being feminine dominance is that love turns into hate. That's how a lot of toxic relationships happen, right? It's like that love is so intense, it's so overpowering that if things don't go a particular way, that love is going to turn into hate. You know, because being masculine is something to wear, like when I give my definitions and my examples of what these different things mean, it doesn't always mean what people think it does, right? Being masculine means that you want your way more than you want a specific person. Or there's a certain dynamic, a certain way that you want to do things, certain principles that you have, certain ideas and ideologies that you have about how the way things should be. That's, that's what it means to be masculine, right? And when you take that masculine approach, that only really works for you if you're also in control, you also have power. But when you have power, without emotional discipline, then you're gonna eventually turn into a tyrant at some point in time. And all these signs were shown throughout. Like think about Anakin Skywalker when he was sat on the council, right? He was emotionally overstimulated by certain things that Palpatine would tell him. When you're feminine dominant, oftentimes 
you're very easily persuaded, you're very easily manipulated by somebody who comes and, and pours a little honey in your ear, says, nah, you're better than them, right? They just don't understand. And sometimes they don't understand. But there's certain steps you gotta get to to be to a place where you're able to be in that position of control from a masculine place. Anakin Skywalker, he was basing his credentials off of his power and off of his accolades, but not basing it off of actually having emotional discipline. He wasn't basing it off of his wisdom. He was very intelligent, but he didn't have a lot of wisdom. So Anakin Skywalker would find himself in, find himself in very tough positions. Think about what happened on Mortis, where he inadvertently led to the death, the sister, the brother, right? They wanted him to be someone who was going to come and bring balance to the force, right? But Anakin Skywalker went through so much pain throughout his life that he just got to the point where he wanted to inflict that pain on other people so that they could feel what it was like to be like him. You got to think about that. There's a certain point, there's a certain slippery slope that you can go down as a feminine dominant. It's the fuck it principle, right? You just go through, you go through certain steps, you go through certain experiences, you get hurt enough, you just say fuck it. You lose all principles. And then you jump all the way over to the other side. And Anakin Skywalker made that decision when he decided to save Palpatine. Right? Because when you're feminine dominant, you're very susceptible to being manipulated by those who are very cunning. Because you don't have principles for yourself. So whoever gives you principles that make you feel like you're going to be in a position of power are going to be the people who can easily manipulate you. Oftentimes, feminine dominant people end up being scammers. They end up being gangbangers, right? They end up taking a lot of positions in life that are going to burn out. You know, if I really were to break down the dark side of the force, not the dark side of the force, but the Sith, right? Versus the Jedi. The Jedi oftentimes was masculine submissive, right? Now, the goal of being in the Jedi is to be feminine submissive, right? You yield yourself to the will of the force, to the, to the light side of the force. You yield yourself to that, and then you live life on those terms, right? But what Anakin did, what some people did within the, the light side of the force is they say, okay, well, I'm right because I'm on the light side. So the Jedi Order, they just got to a point where they stopped being in tune with the force altogether. And they were, you know, just getting dimmer and dimmer to the point where they couldn't even see that the Sith had came back in a being, that they had came back in the power. They had Sidious looking right in their face. The most powerful Sith Lord that had ever been up until that point was right there in their face and they couldn't see him. And Sidious would come in with different ideas of how to control things that couldn't be controlled because it's possible. He's like, you know, the story of Darth Plagueis the Wise. But during this time, these things, they emotionally overstimulated Anakin. He experienced high levels of psychological reactions, feeling like this is not fair. This is not fair. This is not fair. Sometimes you gotta put yourself in a position where you say, okay, cool, either I'm gonna stay in this position that I'm in, I'm gonna do what I have to do to get the things that I need to get done done on my own terms. So one thing that happened to Anakin, yes, bad leadership played a part in it. But everybody's responsible for their own decisions. All that love that Anakin had, it turned into hate because he couldn't control his emotions. All the things that he was afraid of happening, he caused to happen with his own hands. He's afraid of the death of, of Padme. Then he, she pretty much died from a, a broken heart when she was giving birth to the children, Luke and Leia. He knew that his, his, his mission was to bring balance to the force but he was more focused on what can I do right now? I need a quick fix. He was more focused on that quick fix in those moments where things got hectic than thinking more logically, being more calm. 
and that put him in a really bad position. And he fought Obi-Wan, the man who he was supposed to love throughout his life. As a, a man who was feminine dominant in his heart, who Anakin Skywalker was, he had to take this masculine submissive position with those who were in authority around him, right? And by taking this masculine submissive position, one thing about masculine submissiveness cooperation is that if it, you aren't being led in the place and in the way that you think you should be led, it's gonna to lead to resentment, it's gonna to lead to bitterness, it's gonna to lead to hate. All that love that you have is gonna to turn to hate one day. Telling Obi-Wan Kenobi that he hated him. He felt like Obi-Wan Kenobi was holding him back. He felt like all the people who were in the, the Jedi organization on the council were holding him back when really Anakin, his mind wasn't prepared for him to be in the position that he wanted to be in. Just wasn't. And after he crossed that line, became a Sith Lord, became Darth Vader, he spent most of the remainder of his life torturing people, killing people. Whoever crossed his path the wrong way killed him. For the remainder of his life, until he was in a position where that same love that he had, that he had buried deep inside of himself, that confliction, right? That lack of being in alignment, that same love that he had, that caused him to finally make that decision to save his son, Luke. When he saved his son, he died. One thing about being feminine dominant is eventually you gotta get to a point where you're no longer going back and forth. One day you're gonna have to get to a place of alignment where you put your foot down and say, okay, I'm gonna walk this path. But sometimes the path you walk may be a path of destruction. Right? Sometimes it might be a path of destruction, but he finally got to that point. He finally got to that place where his love for his son became what was most important to him and his hatred for Palpatine became what was most important to him. And he redeemed himself at the end. But how much did he have to go through before he redeemed himself? How much did he have to go through? How much suffering and torment did he have to experience within himself? And I know there's different continuities, like in the canon, I believe, you know, he, he was tormented. But I think some people say in the legends that, you know, he felt justified in his decisions. Because, you know, it's true. There were certain aspects of, of the Jedi Order that needed to be abolished in order to bring balance to the force. Because although some people say, and I think that's the, the point of view of George Lucas, which is that there is no balance to be found in between the Jedi and the Sith, right? That the, the light side of the force is balanced already. You operate out of that, which means if you're yielding yourself to power, you yield yourself to power, that's good. And then the dark side is bad. But the truth is this, there's dark side and there's light side throughout all the universe, within throughout the galaxy, right? But the Sith and the Jedi didn't fully represent either the dark side or the light side. The Jedi had fell out of love with the light side of the force and got more caught up in traditions. They got more caught up in trying to fit up to keeping up with the council, keeping up with the Republic. I believe it was the Republic. They got more involved in politics. There's something that happens with religion all the time. You know, a lot of churches these days, they lose focus of God and they're more focused on traditions. They're more focused on pleasing people, right? They're more focused on being masculine and submissive, trying to find ways to keep money in their pocket, trying to find ways to keep people happy. Then they become tyrants of other people. Like the Jedi's, they lied to people. They manipulated people. They kill people who didn't need to be killed. They did it all the time. And sometimes when you, you're doing that over a period of time, you start to foster an environment where you're blinded to the force. So you're blinded to God, to where the people who are really against you are right in your midst. And when religion starts to become something that's dead, when spirituality becomes dead religion, it opens the door for other types of spiritual beliefs and thought processes to come through where there may be more so insidious people who are predicated on the idea of witchcraft, who are predicated on an idea of trying to destroy people and using dark spirituality, because if whatever is supposed to represent true spirituality or pure, clear spirituality 
is something that's corrupted through tradition and corrupted through religiosity and dead religion, then those who are spiritually entombed in more of a, of a emotional type of way, if they aren't getting that from the place that they need to get it from, then if they are unable to step away from that and follow that path in a way where they give themselves some type of principles and they, they find some way to, to be more principled, then they leave from that platform and then whatever goes, goes. Then they may become feminine dominant themselves, taking, you know, that journey of spirituality by any means necessary. And once you get out of attunement, you get out of alignment, right? To where you're no longer in tune with God, then you get to a place where the people who are sent to destroy you are right in your midst. But because they don't look bad on the surface, you don't know. And that's the thing about being masculine and submissive. So I just wanted to give a, a blur pill review Anakin Skywalker. His mindset is ideology. Anakin Skywalker, the feminine dominant. This is Brody. I'm out.